Thanks for joining us late afternoon. We're, we're going to talk for the next half hour on crowdsourcing and how we do crowdsourcing and ideation at Technip FMC. My name is Luis Rodriguez. I am a manager of collaboration at the company and the KM program. I uh, manage a small team, a collaboration team of folks throughout the globe. And this is... And my name is Adrian Villarreal, also a knowledge management specialist at Technip FMC and been in the KM team for about three years. Okay. So, first of all, just briefly, what we're going to talk about, three things. We'll talk a little bit about our company, how our carrying program looks, and then we'll get into exactly uh, why we need something called, that we call facilitated collaboration, followed up by what is it? What is it specifically in regards to two platforms we'll talk about that we utilize for facilitated collaboration? That's Spigot and Meeting Sphere, which you see there on screen, and how we use it to bring business results for the company. So a little bit about our company. We are uh, Technip FMC. We are a merged company. Uh, Technip and Legacy FMC Technologies merged back in 2017. We are an oil and gas products and services company. We support these different areas of our, of our industry. And uh, our KM program at the Legacy FMC Technologies uh, company launched back in 2011. So I just wanted to mention that. Uh, we are about 37,000 employees, and we operate in about 49 countries. In this slide here, we just want to highlight, uh, I mentioned in 2011 we launched KM in, in, in our legacy company, but in the newly merged company, we officially just launched last month. So what we're doing here, we're showcasing that knowledge management, we support our company core values. All right, so why do we need facilitated collaboration? Uh, I'll give a brief kind of definition, and the two words kind of say it. We help facilitate people connecting and collaborating for business results. Um, but why do we need that? What's, what is it that causes us to have this as a service at our company? First of all, uh, global decisions. We had to make global decisions faster. Um, we needed to do a lot of aligning in the business, and it wasn't happening fast enough. A quick example I can give, Back when I was leading one of the communities of practice, uh, the Design Drafting Network, we had to release a global work instruction to align designers on how they're doing drawings and CAD models. And it would take forever, right? A big organization, a lot of people involved. These tools got brought in to help us make decisions quicker, build consensus, and, and move forward with the objectives. Also, inclusiveness and equal voice. We had a situation where in a lot of our meetings, we're meeting globally with a group, and we think we're aligned, and we're asking people uh, if this is what we should be doing. And we're on the phone, and we kind of ask, and nobody answers, and we think and assume, OK, we're aligned. And then we go off, and two months later, we're back at the same place, because we really weren't giving people a voice, and we really weren't uh, including everybody in the conversations. Another reason we needed facilitated collaboration in our company we have to grow a culture of collaboration. So we started this about four years ago, and three years before that, when Adrian says we launched KM, we started our communities of practice. So we needed to start increasing that culture of collaboration, and these facilitated collaboration tools were something that could help us achieve that. There was a downturn in the business. Seems like in oil and gas, there's always a downturn. It's up and down, up and down. And, uh, you know, we had to reduce costs, and travel was something that's always addressed. If you've got to reduce costs, let's reduce travel. And so some of these tools, uh, they really help us connect and get to those objectives without necessarily having to be together in one room. And we'll show you some examples of how we did that. The last thing here is efficiency and improved meeting experiences. So quick question for you all. Raise your hand if you've ever been in a meeting and you're wondering, what are we talking about and what are we trying to get out of it? You know those kind of meetings, you, you've been in them? We've been in them too, we had a lot of, we still do, unfortunately, but we're working to fix that. And this is what's helping us do it. Really drive to a point, really get a tangible product and really align and hear people's voices. One additional thing, just kind of contrasting and comparing two things here, presenting versus facilitation. So what Adrian and I, Susan, we're doing just now, right, we're presenting as somebody kind of talking, and you guys are mostly listening, actively listening, I hope. Uh, well, facilitation is, is more about getting your knowledge out, right? And that's what we're talking about. With these facilitated collaboration tools, it's about engaging the audience and having them share their knowledge with the group. 
this we got from a company that um, leadership strategies, you can see it there. We, we've all gone, everybody in our CAM team has been through uh, facilitation training, and we also have a book, and we've done some exercises to learn how to be internal consultants. So now, what is facilitated collaboration exactly, and what is it in terms of meeting sphere and SPIG at these two tools we've been talking about? Okay, so I mentioned a bit earlier that the newly formed company, Technip FMC, uh, launched, officially launched KM just last month. So what you're seeing here is our KM homepage on our internet. And down at the bottom, we're highlighting the four main services that we provide as a KM team. And all of this consists of, uh, all, it's a global KM tool set, and we'll, we'll start off with the Well, which is our enterprise wiki. The Bridge, this is gonna be our knowledge sharing platform, our communities of practice, if you will. Experts Explain, this is um, a knowledge sharing webinar where we invite experts, whether it's internal or external, uh, to come in and share their stories and knowledge. We also have a podcast series that we are producing in-house, and this is about people's roles, different roles of the company. So four main areas that we, that we support but here, today, we're going to f focus in on facilitated collaboration. And this is, these are, the, again, the platforms that we're going to use for crowdsourcing ideas and solutions. So now to let, let us all be entering the crowdsourcing zone. You should have some music. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so as internal consultants, you know, we're approached with many different issues from around the business. And when we get that call, you know, we have all these different platforms and technologies to support our customers with. And, you know, in the middle here, these are the two that we use for the facilitated collaboration service. But again, depending on the need, we, we kind of go through a series of uh, questions that we ask, um, requirements gathering to understand what is the need, what do we want to end up with. And so, so we do this to, in order to choose the best option. So again, facilitated collaboration, we defined it a little bit earlier, and we did say we use two platforms. So, so for the first one, Meeting Sphere, um, Meeting Sphere is more for your smaller uh, virtual workshop type meetings. So any, any meetings that you know, we conduct on, on a daily, weekly basis, right? We can convert these into the platform and it's online, and it allows people to enter the session using a, a URL that we send out. And again, we, we're going to plan and design the activities that, are, that take up the hour or two hour uh, time frame. So again, meeting spheres for those smaller 10 to 12, 20 people virtual workshops. Now, Spigot, Spigot is also an online platform, but it's more for the... Um, I guess challenges, we, we, we call these challenges, more company-wide. And you know, we have a KM term that we use here for idea jams, right? So we'll, we'll get into some of the specifics here, but again, this is the two platforms we're using uh, for facilitated collaboration. And the first one, Meeting Sphere. So I think I mentioned one to two hour sessions is usually the, the time frame for this. It's mainly held virtually because of the travel restrictions, et cetera. Uh, but they also can be uh, delivered asynchronously. So just like a survey that you deploy out to a number of people, we can build these sessions asynchronously and have people complete these in, in a given manner of time. Uh, again, typically 10 to 20 participants. Using this, we have experience that we do achieve consensus and alignment a lot faster compared to your face-to-face -face traditional style meetings. Um, a couple of key features here, benefits. Um, you can literally see people's voices being heard, right? Because I mentioned everybody participates online. As soon as we ask the question that we're facilitating, people are, you can see people's responses coming in real time. And all of this is done in an, an anonymous manner, so anonymity is a key enabler. And down at the bottom, what you see is just some of the tool sets, some of the workspaces that the platform provides. You know, we can brainstorm, we can rate any given way, hold discussions, etc. But I wanted to highlight down at the bottom right the, the feature of 
generating a report at the end of the session. So that's one of the main features that, that's very useful. So at the end of your two hour meeting, you can literally just generate the report. It's in a Microsoft Word uh, Form. document format. And we can just hand that off to our sponsor and they're off. And here we are off to the next meeting, right? So that's Meeting Sphere. So to get into a little bit of the details here, staying with Meeting Sphere, what you're looking at on screen here is the brainstorm workspace. So you see the question there. We basically ask the question, in this case, how could we motivate our sales partners? People are typing at their computers, typically uh, remotely. You know, we can do these in one location, but uh, typically we're separate. They'll start responding here. You can see some of the colored dots there. If you've ever facilitated a session uh, and you've seen people do the sticky dots, right, we're just kind of a, a small rating type of exercise, and they can apply sticky dots excellent, counterproductive, et cetera. We take those, and anybody in the session can take those and start bucketing them and putting them over here on the left where you see the folders. And so we start organizing very quickly. We gather a lot of information very quickly. We start organizing it because we do it all together. We ask people to move their uh, information over. And so this is just a snapshot. We don't have enough time to really get into all of it, but that's the brainstorm workspace. What I wanted to share about it, though, is the way it works in practicality. So uh, a few months ago, I was facilitating uh, uh, for a, a manager who wanted to have his meeting and try this out. It was a one hour meeting. I only did the first half hour. I was invited to come in and do a few things, a few activities with this tool for the first half hour. Within the first five minutes, uh, there's an individual who chimes in on the phone, right? I'm, I'm in the, the room with the manager and there's people calling in from all over. And he's like, hey, why are we using this tool? Why, can we just have our meetings the way we normally have them? And the manager, of course, nicely asked, look, look, give it a chance. Let's look at this tool. About 15 minutes in, he starts chiming in again. Well, in 30 minutes, I'm done. I finished my part. I'm unplugging, and I'm letting them continue with their normal meeting. Guess who starts talking right after that I leave? That same person. OK, here's what we got to do. We were talking last week that blah, 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 blah. And it was easy to see this person is the person who typically likes to dominate the conversation in meetings or wants to be heard more than anybody else. This tool, through this brainstorm, because of the anonymity, we were asking them questions, and everybody was typing. So we could see, this is what I didn't say, we could see everybody be heard. You can see everybody's thoughts all at once. It's a, it was a game changer, right? But for some people, they don't really like that because they want to be the ones that are kind of overshadowing or talking above or, or kind of dominating the conversation. This is a picture of that uh, rating exercise. There's many different ways we can format it. But in this particular rating, uh, you know, they're just selecting from one to 10 what they'd like here, rating the effectiveness of these, of these statements. The, what I want to share about rating is another quick story. Um, I was facilitating for one of the directors, and we were designing the session. And, you know, we have assessments like this. They can be this way, or they can be an easy yes, no. So I asked the director, they've been trying to merge, they're going to merge products and services organization from one of our products. 20 years ago, they decided to keep products and services separate and only the top people talk. Well, they were bringing them together. They had been talking about this for about 14 months. And I asked the director, I said, do you want us to ask in, in meeting sphere yes or no question? Should we merge products and services? He says, no, it's fine. We've been talking about it for months. It's all my managers are in line. No, you know what? Go ahead and add it. So we had the question, we're finally facilitating. It's the HR manager, this director, myself in a room with his 12 managers calling in from throughout the globe. We asked, we get to that point in the session, we asked the question, should we merge products and services? Seven of the 12 people said no. At which point, the director puts it on mute, slides his chair back, grabs his head and goes, what is this, right? He's like, how can this be? I look at the HR manager, she's like, lost. And so I have to kind of bring them back because everybody's waiting for us to talk. I said, guys, this is not a bad thing. Actually, this is a really good thing because now you know the truth about how your managers feel. Imagine trying to roll that out to your organization and you don't even have alignment within. So this is the way we use rating to really kind of understand what people are thinking. So as a result from the ratings, you know, depending on how you customize it or format it, this is just an example of the results. This is a table that we end up with. It's, it's colored. Um, you can see the results right away. You can share it if you want during the live session. But, you know, for anybody here that's familiar with, with quality, um, you can utilize this as a pick chart, right? Choose your easy wins or, you know, the, the, the top 
items. So this is just an example of the results. Some sample use cases, and I'm just going to read, read off of these, but, you know, we've been in sessions where we've designed for process mapping, voice of the customer sessions, impact analysis, risk assessment, requirements definition, setting goals. Actually, I think, I believe we're starting to ramp up on those type of requests because people want to set goals for their teams for the upcoming year. Issue identification and resolution and lessons learned. And then there's, there's two different types of benefits that we're experiencing also. The first one being results-driven engagement, right? And, and the top two being, you know, execution of, of, of our meetings and, and the results that we get out of that. And just, in general, greater participation from our participants. And then the, the, the second type of benefit here is a trans, transformational communication. And Luis mentioned it earlier. We, we, all voices heard and then also we're hearing the truth and we're starting to trust one another so that's impacting the the need to create that collaborative culture so I've got three quick stories success stories that I'd like to share regarding meeting sphere and the first one here this was an engineering team that had approached us um, they had a project that they were about to deploy to um, define their processes and we have a system, uh, a business process management system, that we used. And there was a challenge, though, this time around. I and mean, we've done this before, but this time with a newly merged company, there was a challenge of a tighter schedule and less budget to do this in. The previous project did, did consist of, you know, the cost for travel. It required people to be in a room, you know, for about a week to discuss and agree on these processes that they were trying to figure out. And, you know, the entire project time, just given the number of processes that we had to, to develop, anywhere from 18 months to two years, okay? But this time, our KM team was contacted, we had a facilitator, and we decided to use facilitated collaboration to help us with this, right? So we planned the sessions, and we used the SIPOC methodology, uh, we ended up doing two-hour sessions, uh, many of them, as a matter of fact, with subject matter experts invited. Uh, this was, you know, ongoing for, for a number of period of time. Um, we also came up with a pre-meeting requirement, some homework for people to do, and this was done asynchronously. At the end, what we ended up with was the project was completed uh, two months early, and we had a, a, a significant amount of money that we saved utilizing the tool and pre-meetings actually became a requirement a recommended practice for future BPMS projects at the time this particular project was conducted by our colleague who's right here on the front row Tammy raise your hand she actually worked on it uh, with another colleague of ours Charles Jessup this particular success story so if you want to hear more about that one in particular you can see Tammy after the, the session here all right so success story number two um, using this platform to collaborate with our key external customers. So earlier this year, myself and another colleague who's not present here today, uh, we were approached about facilitating a three-day value engineering workshop. So that basically consisted of two small engineering teams, one from Technip FMC and the other from our external uh, customer. We used, we, we wanted, we knew we wanted to use Meeting Sphere. But this was a team that had been used to the traditional whiteboard workshops. So there was some re reluctancy there. I can sense it, right? And, you know, we ended up utilizing the tool on day two. This was after lunch. And when I finally said, hey, guys, let's try it out. Let's just try it out. I guarantee we're going to get good results. And once we did, it was like, man, we couldn't stop. We could not stop collaborating. I think we went off from 1 p.m. to about 6 p.m., five hours straight, and, and that was on day two. And, they, and we learned a lot about the use of the tool. It helped us collect. We found out that we, there was also savings there because they were actually looking externally at a consultant agency to, to see about facilitating the session. And, you know, we saved that by delivering the session in-house ourselves. Um, at the end, we delivered a full report and we also scribed all of the ongoing discussions outside of the use of the tool 
And then recently I, I followed up with them and I learned that there was a PO uh, issued for $700,000. So just, you know, right away you're, you're seeing some potential, you know, winnings there. And then the last story, and this was also recent, um, we partnered with APQC, actually Nancy Troxell from APQC in Houston, uh, to help them plan the upcoming KM conference. And you know, this consisted of supporting the steering committee, about 15 participants, and it was a real simple session, but you know, it, it, it took some time to plan and actually execute, and we brainstormed on the following, right? They have a 25th anniversary coming up, so we wanted to come up with a design and theme for that. Uh, we wanted to talk about the general sessions, the tracks, the content, breakouts, and workshops. So um, it was a good experience, and, and those are some of the quotes that Nancy uh, provided us from her own experience. All right, so now Spigot. I'll talk a little bit about the other tool and try to wrap up quickly so we can have some time for questions. Um, this is the larger tool, the one that we deploy to broader groups. Up to 12,000 we can deploy here at the company uh, to do these idea jams or challenges as we call them. Um, no, larger scale, but still a lot of collaboration that takes place. I know you can, probably can't read that, but I'll walk you through what's on the left. That's a typical process for how we use Spigot. We have a question, we post a challenge out there to a number of people, whatever the audience is, and we basically start the ideation, the collaboration, followed by a voting and commenting phase. Once we get the voting and commenting going, we look at uh, an expert review. We select some experts from the, from the group that's coming to us, and we start analyzing. Those experts analyze all of the ideas that came through and the ones that have the most ratings. Sometimes it's a thumbs up rating, or we can set it as a star rating. Then we prioritize and rank. Uh, there's a tool called Pairwise, which I'll show in a little bit, that helps us to figure out what the, the highest ideas are uh, rated by the population, by the group. And then finally, we do a selection phase where we decide here are the final ideas that should be, you know, having some time and budget put against them so that we can implement those ideas. Uh, this is just a typical uh, home page for one of the challenges. Uh, you can see up front the question, the ideas, the likes, how many comments, and the views. Um, this is kind of the ideas view of the, of the platform. They look like this. They're like standard idea cards. They'll have the title of the idea of the person, the description of what they're proposing. Uh, and those forms can be adjusted. We can adapt and make those forms any way we want, but they'll display similar to this. They pick a picture to go with it or the system automatically generates it and you get these ideas and again, people can vote and we can set how they vote for them. So the crowd starts voting on the ideas. We have uh, pairwise voting I mentioned a little earlier. So how we assess this, imagine if, if I gave you all uh, 40, ideas and I ask you to put them to rank, uh, order those, right? To put those in some kind of order. That's a hard thing to do. So what, what the people at Spig had done is they created a, an algorithm. So all they have to do now is present us uh, or the users of this uh, particular challenge two ideas at a time. So they pair ideas, A against B. You ever been to the eye doctor? Which one looks better? One or two? A, B. That's all you gotta do. Which one's better? One or two? And you do that, it's 15 sets. You can do it up to three times. And then in the background, the system's calculating which ones are your top. And that's how we kind of filter down some of the ideas. This is that pairwise phase. Some of the um, benefits here uh, with this tool, uh, employee engagement. I think this has been one of the biggest, nicest surprises for us in terms of engagement. We have a lot of people coming to us saying, hey, I want to do a speaker challenge. I want to do a speaker challenge. Even when we think they should be using another tool like our wiki, I want to start with Spigot, right? They really like it. So engagement is big. Uh, it helps us for product development and product improvement. So, you know, how we improve a product, we can ask a question, get people to crowdsource, a large group, come in there and help us improve our products. And of course, we're doing this for our customers. None of this we would do if we're not trying to enhance our products and our services for our clients or our external customers. So I'll, I'll share three stories as well about how we use Spigot. Uh, the first one here is our subsea one voice idea jam. This was about a year and a half ago and the idea was we were a newly merged company, as Adrian mentioned, and there was some, uh, you know, some improvements to be made within our subsea organization. Some of our clients were coming back, talking to our executives, saying, you don't really seem like you're one company, you're not really gelling, you're not aligned, which I guess could be expected since we had just recently merged. 
So one of the things we did is, uh, as a KM group, we, got, we participated by doing a challenge, and it was called the Subsea One Voice Idea Challenge. The question you can see there, we were basically asking, what is it about uh, our business in Subsea that we're doing that doesn't really align, or how are we not aligning? So we put that out there, and uh, this one had a lot of executive visibility. As a matter of fact, um, we purchased uh, this for a temporary, uh, for a few weeks, just to do this challenge. And it was such a success that we were able to keep it, now we have a longer term uh, uh, licensing agreement with them. So this one voice idea challenge, I'll show you some more numbers on it. Basically 15,000 employees we uh, sent this out to. We had uh, over 3,000 um, idea visitors, so people visiting the, that idea jam. 333 ideas, 1,700 votes, and that yielded we came up with our top 10, right? We identified through that process I showed earlier the top 10 ranked ideas. It was deployed over all of our regions, and then we took that and went a step further. So I'm going to talk about Mediasphere now. We took the information that we got out of that uh, challenge, and we had a Mediasphere session, and we started doing focus groups. We had 84 people involved in these focus groups where we dove in a little bit deeper and found out exactly what is going on in the business and why are we not looking like we're one face to the customer. Uh, we took it a step further. We had 110 people interviewed one-on-one, -on -one, understanding what's really going on to, to identify. So all that culminated in five uh, specific concerns that we identified that we uh, gave to our executives, and they could take action on to help improve that. So that's our first success story with Spigot. Our second one is uh, People and Culture Lean Challenge. How many of you on here are familiar with Lean? Right? You lean, lean is typically more of something you'll hear in the production space, right? You're trying to produce things, you want to be lean. Well, our, uh, our leadership in, in HR, which this is what we call HR, our company, People and Culture, they wanted to implement lean and be lean as an as a HR organization. So how do we improve our processes and our systems? And there's four things specifically. We want to make our processes customer-centric. We wanted to develop our talent, manage our resources, and lastly, champion our culture and drive engagement. And so this question was put out there. How can we better, sorry, how can we be better, smarter, and or faster in all that we do? We got uh, 44 ideas so far. This is an open challenge. This one's going to be considered like an open digital suggestion box that stays open. We're always accepting ideas on how we can improve in people and culture. So far, 44 ideas. 380 views, and we got some really good ideas that have already made it to the implementation phase. The last story here, uh, naming our new community practice platform. So we have a community practice platform, and we were taking that, or we are we're still working on taking that into the cloud. And uh, we had merged, and we had people from both sides of the company that had communities. So we said, let's, let's do a naming contest. And we use this same tool to say, suggest some names. We got uh, 51 ideas submitted. Uh, we were able to filter those down. So we used one of our tools to help name another one of our tools, right? And so we came up with this name here, and our, our community practice platform now is going to be called The Bridge. And um, yeah, we just used these tools to do that. So not a lot of time. We have so much more we could have talked about, and I know we went fast. But that's the idea. At Technip FMC, we're using uh, both of those tools as primary enablers for facilitated collaboration in addition to communities of practice and wikis and the other things we showed earlier. So with that, and if there is any time, any questions? I think we can take a couple of questions, but I want to, I want to uh, Nancy, do you want to ask a question about consensus and dialogue? No, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> if you're happy, I'm happy. This is a company that I've had the privilege of uh, interviewing almost all these members, including Luis and Adrian, right. around because they are a fantastic virtual team. Can you already ask that? Yeah, I'm going to ask that question for you. Uh, you said yeah, yeah, yeah. that using these tools, in particular meeting sphere, helps reach consensus faster. Right? And I really like the story that you told about you know, it, it, the anonymous posting reveals the truth. Uh, I think it's called mutual ignorance, right? That in, in lots of social groups, we assume that other people want something, and therefore we kind of go along with it because we assume everybody wants it. There's a big study done in the 50s on. Um, colleges in the U.S. that were looking at desegregating. And when they asked the students whether they thought their peers were accepted, it was universally no. And when they asked the individuals whether they supported it, it was almost universally yes. So everybody assumed everyone else was against it and they were the minority. And 
and that's, uh, I think that's a very powerful uh, yeah. uh, feature of this. But the, the thing I was curious about was that there are some issues where um, you don't want to reach consensus too quickly because you need to unpack things with dialogue. Yeah, people have to be heard. We do, we do talk as well. Do you so discriminate between the types of things we do that you use this tool for uh, you know, versus where you would engage in deeper, more face-to-face -face type of stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, what Adrian was mentioning earlier about how we engage the sponsor and try to understand exactly what the problem is and how they're trying to solve it. Many times we'll bring this to someone and they'll say, I don't think we need that. That uh, use case Adrian showed, they did not want it because they're in person. They couldn't get past a certain point. And Adrian said, guys, this tool will help us. And then we implemented it, and they started using it, and it became so a you, success. you have those face-to-face -face techniques? Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Like I mentioned, we were all trained as facilitators as well. So we can facilitate the analog way, too, but the tool is really helpful. Yeah. Uh, we'll take one more question. Questions? I promise not to. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's, that's the process that we have to engage with the, you know, the sponsor to understand. If, if there's a big need to really dive in deep and in a broad scope, we may do it in two or three sessions. Uh, I think what we mentioned, that success story earlier about the engineering group, that was multiple sessions. So it's always just a conversation with the sponsor to understand exactly what is needed. And a lot of times, they don't want to spend a lot of time to get things done. And many of our sessions are an hour to an hour and a half, typically about an hour and a half. And, and also, I just wanted to mention that, you know, we cannot support all of the requests coming in as a KM team, right? So eventually we'll become the bottleneck. But we do offer training for people who want to learn how to utilize this tool and facilitate sessions in the respective business areas. But yeah, designing it in the process is, is something that we do meticulously. Should we ask this here? You know, I mentioned in the story how we asked the director. It's, it's a back and forth design, and then once we get it done, we, we actually do a dry run. We do a, a simple dry run with a few people, make sure it flows and makes sense and the timing, and then we execute these sessions. Not all of them do we do dry runs with, but most. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.